Shalom, shalom. I am Pastor Juanita Weiss. Shalom. I am Rabbi David Weiss. We bring you greetings from Malchul Chaim Messianic Congregation in beautiful Chesapeake, Virginia. Yes, yes. Um, we do, and we're so excited that you could join us in another session of Ashrei. And at this point, you should know what Ashrei means, right? Ashrei has to do with happiness and blessedness, but not a state that comes from anything external, right? It comes from a, your relationship with Hashem, mm -hmm. your relationship with Yeshua. This is how we receive this. And I, I think I've said before that when um, I was reading early in my walk with the Lord, I'm reading the book, uh, actually reading Matthew and looking at all the Beatitudes and all the Ashray statements that I didn't know Ashray at the time, but blessed are the poor in spirit. And so I'm reading all of these and I'm looking for myself. I'm like, oh, these people are blessed, right? Mm. They are happy. And then, I'm, and I was a little grieved because I could not find myself like pure in heart. Is that me? I could not find myself. And so I was a little grieved, but it wasn't until much later that as I began to delve in to this understanding of ashray and this blessedness, right? That I thought, oh, okay, once I'm with him, then I will be all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. In the olam haba, in, the he in heaven, and then we realize that Yeshua is talking about real people who have encountered the kingdom. Mm. You know, when we there's a there's one thing about you know encountering a movement or encountering an institution, but when you encounter the kingdom, your whole mindset is transformed so that the broken, the broke, the poor in spirit, yeah, that's you, the pure in heart. That's you because you are allowing Yeshua to live these things through you. Because I was trying to find myself thinking I could conjure up those things, but I couldn't, right? Because it was all about Yeshua living in us. You, you bring up such a good point because we normally think of the kingdom as out of time and out of space. And it's somehow in our, our time and space, it's in our future somehow. And how can we have, how can we be joyful now while, while, we see so much trouble in the world, and yet Yeshua has come to bring us yes. his kingdom, even here and now, from a place <laughs> out of time and space. And that's why being in his presence every day, it feels so supernatural, so foreign, if you will, to what's going on in the earth right now. And that's Ashrei, beloved. That's Ashrei. And blessed is anyone who can experience the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God alive in you. There's a kingdom that is now yes. and there's a kingdom that is to come. And we oftentimes look for the kingdom that is to come when the kingdom that is now is very much alive. And that's what Yeshua came to show us, right? He came to show us that the kingdom that is now, he says the kingdom of, of God is within you. Right. It is within oh. you. It is near you. It is right here. And until we embrace that, we'll be looking through the word of God as I was and crestfallen that I was not there. But in Yeshua, there's me. In Yeshua, there's you. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking about real people. I know. <laughs> my, my mother used to say she didn't know Yeshua at the time. And she used to say, how could Yeshua have come? There's supposed to be peace in the world. 
and like, mom, but you can have his peace with you right yeah. now. You can have ashray that he brings you joy and blessing and peace, even now, even in the midst of what's going on around us. Yeah. We can still have that ashray now yes. with Yeshua. <laughs> amen. Amen. And uh, I think it's a, uh... One source, I think it was the JPS that says that translates Ashray as all oh, the gladness of, mm. right? All oh, the gladness of the one who is poor in spirit, who has a pure heart, right? All oh, the gladness of one who thirsts and hungers after righteousness. <laughs> there's gladness in that, beloved. And that's what we came to bring you today through our show, Ashray. Just a little tad uh, bit of Ashray, that Ashray moment that we can bring to you. Because uh, we find, too, just from our intro, that Ashray are those who make uh, the house of God their dwelling. I, we can do that. It, we live just the, it's, it's all about the kingdom. It's all about a kingdom perspective and it's all about kingdom living. And mm. so we want to bring you just a slice of that today. And we're so excited that you joined with us and um, that you're going to uncover, you know, during the course of the show as we do, right? A little more about him. Mm -hmm. And when we uncover something about him, it's an ashray moment, beloved. It is a blessed, fortunate, happy, oh, the gladness of moment. And anytime you can have one of those, you want to capture it, right? You yeah. want to capture it. So, so saying that, we have some amazing guests that are with us today. And we want to bring them on because um, they're going to share about their experience with, uh, you know, this coming from, uh, Jesus to Yeshua or embracing the, uh, the Jewish Jesus and embracing an understanding, right, of Torah mm -hmm. and even incorporating that into their lives, right? So I'm you're ready excited. To, I know. So let's bring them on to our show. And uh, there they are. This is Ross and Nita Folkers. Shalom, shalom. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> We are so excited that you could join us today. Um, we've been looking forward to this, and I'm so glad that um, with the help of Hashem, right, Bizrat Hashem, that uh, this could occur. So um, you're sending us greetings from the beautiful hills of... North Carolina, <laughs> wow. around Beulah Dean. Oh, my, my. Uh, and they, uh, of course, have made us salivate because especially... Nita, because she's always posting these pictures like, oh, this is my morning. Oh, this is my evening. <laughs> and it's always the sun coming up over the mountains or the sun going down or these rolling hills and these beautiful waterfalls that they've walked to. And I'm sitting there like, wow, that is a little taste of heaven. So and the forest, the forest is coming alive right now with its beautiful colors, you know, of the reds and the yellows and still got the greens in them. We're coming up on the peak season for coming to peep at the trees. Yes. Wow. And, and you know, uh, Nita, I'm sure that's a writer's haven. So we'll have to see what you can write uh, along the way, right? It's a writer's haven. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, it really is. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're looking forward to that visit at some point. We are so looking forward to it. And um, may it be soon. Amen. 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 So share with us then um, uh, your story. Anita, I guess we'll start with you. Or maybe if the story's intertwined, then you you both know how to sh how best to share that. But, you know, how you came to know Jesus and then how you came to embrace the Jewishness of Jesus. Well, I, uh, I have to start because because I, I draw I drew the long straw yesterday when we started to talk about um, our faith walk and, and how we got to where we are today. Uh, and so I got the introduction. <laughs> so, and, and my introduction uh, to the faith walk 
came through my heritage because I was I was born into the understanding of who Jesus was and a Christian walk. And I even have paperwork that shows I was baptized at August 9th of uh, 1969. So wow. it's like oh, I, can, I was 11 years old. So yeah. that's that's where it started with me. Um, and then our walk together, we got married in 97. And uh, at that time, we made the agreement to uh, to stop our wayward walk <laughs> and get more grounded in our faith and our understanding of the scriptures and our and our relationship with the Lord. And that was a uh, that was part of our marriage, uh, getting together and and making it grounded in in the Word is and being one of the ways we set boundaries in our marriage. Yeah, so um, I I don't have that piece of paper. <laughs> um, I actually was coming off of a 20 year rebellion against God, um, uh, but I did uh, get saved and spirit filled in the Assembly of God Church um, when I was an older teenager. And um, when they tried to hold me accountable, I didn't like that. And so I ran headlong the other way for 20 years. So meeting Ross and, and choosing to come back to the Lord and, and make him a priority in our lives was something that we did. And, and we did that by, um, we went to a church of the Nazarene and they, um, we had a motorcycle group. <laughs> that was our main draw, sad yeah, to say. It, it, it was my fault in, in terms of getting to the Nazarene church because we had, we'd started out together in a non-denominational church and, and that's where we got married. And then as time progressed, uh, we made a couple of church hops uh, in, in our marriage and trying to find a place that we really settled at. And during that time, we bought a motorcycle and uh, we were going by the Nazarene church and they, they had a big motorcycle rally out in front and that, that drew my attention. And, and so, uh, we ended up joining their, their ministry there and their motorcycles and having some good, good times with them. And along that time, uh, we went to the couple's Bible study class, uh, in the church. And, uh, it was, uh, a really great teacher. Uh, his name was Mark. And, uh, so Nita, Nita really got her hooks uh, into some of the things that he was saying. He really, he really stimulated both of us, but it was really her. Oh, he is a great teacher. Yeah, he really was. He brought in the, as we knew it at the time, Old Testament to all of his teachings. And, and that was the first time that I realized that Jesus Hebrew name was Yeshua and that it meant salvation. And that just sparked something in me. And so we went from there and we joined their small group and, and I started actually reading the Bible um, instead of just kind of having it as a you know thing in my nightstand and uh, then discovered some kind of discrepancy, some things that I, I didn't really understand. And um, one of them was when Yeshua said, I've come only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And um, I thought, well, gee, where does that leave me? Um, and of course, the other one was the Matthew 5 portion where he said that he didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets. And we had always kind of been taught that that was not really for, for the now time. So, so anyway, um, I ended up getting a book from a client actually uh, called Too Long in the Sun by Richard Reeves. And it came with a warning from the client. And he said, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. There will be no in between. Um, because he just told it like it was, really told it like it was. And um, lots of bold statements and all caps and really just kind of, dare I say, in your face. Um, but he footnoted all of the stuff about Christianity and the history of Christianity. And of course, me being me, I read all of the footnotes and then gave it to Ross. And, and uh, so he read it and, and off we went. Um, it, it had an impact in terms of our understanding of the roots of Christianity and some of the things that have 
a syncretism, uh, basically the word syncretism, uh, in that things that have crept into Christianity over time uh, and been adopted by Christianity. And it was eye-opening to see how those things were not actually biblical. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point, then, we, we journeyed into getting connected. You know, it was like the Lord and his spirit was, was opening our eyes gradually, this progressive revelation of, of the understanding of the scriptures, the understanding of Yeshua as Jesus and his Jewishness and, his, and the Hebrew roots of, of the scriptures. Yeah, but it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, God or God orchestrated a lot of things in getting our attention, and I think Ross was going to share about one of the ways. Of those. One of the ways that he got our attention was uh, we went to a a going away party for some friends from one of the first churches. Well, the church where we actually got married in. There was a going away party, and it was hosted at a friend's house, uh, Nikki and George, and. Uh, as we walked in the door, Nita had a pendant on, and the pendant was a Star of David with a cross in the middle of it. And Nikki noticed that pendant, and then uh, she took Nita into the other room and uh, talked to her about, well, I, I was in the airport in, in Reno or Las Vegas, someplace like that, and I was sitting reading a book by Kay Arthur. And Israel, my beloved, it, was what she was reading. And next to her was an airline pilot, and the airline pilot uh, struck up a conversation with her and ended up giving her a book and inviting her to a home group in Denver. And the, the airline pilot was was wearing zit seats. And and so the book that Nikki actually gave me to is called Restoration, and it's by D. Thomas Lancaster, and it's Returning the Torah of God to the Disciples of Jesus. Uh, and so Nikki gave us the airline pilot's name and contact information. He, uh, his, his name was Martin, and he uh, flew out of Denver. Uh, and so there was a home group that he was a part of, and he gave, and Nita got that contact information from Nikki. And so they invited us to a Shabbat gathering. And, uh, you know, we went, and they were very, very welcoming and I, we were so excited. I was so excited to, to listen. And, and so we went to, to lunch afterwards and I asked Ross what he thought. I said, I feel like I've come home. I, I just couldn't explain it. Mm -hmm. It just, I, it felt like I'd come home yes. and I was just at such peace and I felt ashrayed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, so Ross, what do you think, honey? Can we do can we go? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, Yona, the bird, did not fly through my heart that day. I was okay. sitting there like this, you know, and it was, you know, and, and Nita and I had that conversation at lunch. And it was like, well, honey, you can do this, but it's not really something I want to do. I, I've got my motorcycle and I want to spend my Shabbats mm -hmm. running around on the bike, you know. <laughs> so uh, that we had we had some growth to go together from there. Uh, He's being really nice. That's not how he said it. <laughs> <laughs> what he said was, honey, I'll support you in anything you want to do, but I'm not doing this. <laughs> That's how he said it. <laughs> oh, I, can't, okay. I, I can't wait for the transformation here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, during this time, we're also supporting a, a young man in his ministry, uh, and his name is Aaron. And Jewish man. He's Jewish. a Jewish, yep. Jewish man. And he was actually studying to be a rabbi and came to know Jesus or Yeshua. Yeshua. And he was publishing his teachings on CD. And so since we both had drives that were a pretty good distance to work, we were listening to his CDs as we went back and forth to work. But one of them was about Shabbat. And I listened to it and he he had actually, in coming to know Jesus, went full Christian and did not uh, really, he could not relate on how to have Christians come to an understanding of Shabbat. He really struggled with that yeah. because he had a lot of baggage around mm -hmm. the rules from the rabbinic side yeah. of Shabbat. Yeah. Just as me going, I've got a lot of baggage from a Christian church and the way I grew up in a small town, and I really don't want to spend a whole bunch of time in church. Mm -hmm. So 
<laughs> there's baggage on both sides. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so Nita and I were talking on the cell phone coming home from work. And I said that I thought Aaron's teaching was really good. It was right on point. And, and she was very disappointed with that. Well, that's because his teaching indicated from his understanding that Shabbat was, we had rest in Yeshua and we could rest any day. It, it, the day didn't matter. And, and that was not my understanding. And mm -hmm. so I was very upset. I mean, I was crying. I said, I, honey, I, I can't, I can't go back. I can't, I've come too far. There's too much. And I was just really, really upset. And, and so Ross said, okay, all right. When we get home, we'll <laughs> open the Bible and we'll go from Genesis to Revelation okay. and we'll investigate Shabbat. Beautiful. And we'll find out what the Word of God has to say about the Sabbath. So we did. And my mom would, joined us. She lived with us at the time. She was 80 years old. And so she came up and joined us. And we went from Genesis to Revelation and looked up every, every First reference thing. on Shabbat. And so when we got to the last one... Um. I closed the Bible and I sincerely said, well, honey, it looks like we really need to do this. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. beautiful. Ashray. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you of all the Moedim, including Shabbat and the other seven, what was the first one that you really celebrated in the home? It sounds like it might've been the Shabbat. Well, it, it, it was, but it was actually we didn't, we didn't really yeah. understand yeah. much about the traditions around Shabbat at this time. Mm -hmm. We just knew we we just knew in our spirit what Shabbat was. But the time period leading up to when we first did something that was very dramatic was actually around Hanukkah. It was. It was Hanukkah. Looking at a way, yeah. looking at a way to avoid Christmas and the commercialism, and to to do something that would take its place in terms of being close to God and and walking in the Spirit. And so we went through a book by a ministry, and um, my mom went with us too. Every night we would read a portion, and I remember looking up. I don't know what night it was, but mom was crying on the couch. She, tears were streaming down her face. I'm like, mom, are you okay? And she's like, all my life, 80 years old now, all my life, I have wanted to do the will of God. Oh. And here it is. How oh. could I not have seen this? Wow. That is powerful. Yeah. That's an ashray moment there. It really is. I yeah. just, that, That's what... That's what Hashem wants, right? It's when we get the revelation to receive it and embrace it. And so however many years she had left, that moment right there just did something in the heavenlies. You know, it's like yeah. her eyes were open because she embraced the truth. And whenever we embrace the truth, it becomes like a domino effect, if you will, you know, like an avalanche. Somebody else is going to catch it too. Yes. And I remember reading scripture and I guess it was in Matthew or Luke when he was walking with the disciples on the road to Emmaus and, and their hearts burned within them. Mm -hmm. And I could so relate to that because my heart just burned within me in this. How, how Lord did we get so ashrayed to <laughs> understand and have our eyes open to the wonders and the joy of your Torah. Yeah. It was, it was, it, it was, I remember it. And it's just, the walk continues to amaze. <laughs> amen, amen. Oh my. And you know, uh, it's so funny uh, that you mentioned uh, Hanukkah as the one you were, you would celebrate. Well, that's when you first walked into our congregation. You remember that it was one Hanukkah, a Hanukkah celebration. Was it or was it Purim? Oh, it was Purim. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Purim. You're exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> that was you a made me a queen too. for the evening. Yes, of course, because oh, that's, that's what you right. <laughs> So um, 
Wow. Is there any more that you all would like to share? Because that's absolutely amazing. It's a beautiful testimony of just going through um, the all of the little obstacles that were set up, you know, even the, okay, it's not for me. Okay. All right. Well, I'll do this, but I won't do that. And then just walking through it together and even the tears, you know, uh, just walking through it together and that you both received the revelation and you're still walking in it. That, that mm -hmm. is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. You but had something else, Ralph? Do you do you want more of that, or should we move into another segment of? Well, uh, we have a few more minutes. If you'd like to share something else that you think would be very relevant and pertinent for our uh, audience. Well, the relevant and pertinent part is that once we started to really begin to understand Shabbat and try to to walk in the scriptures in terms of of letting it into our lives in a big way, well, that opened the door to 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 many other people and the relationships yeah. that come with that, mm -hmm. as well as some outstanding teachers in our early walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to know Brad Scott, Rico Cortez. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Bill Cloud to the house. Mm -hmm. We had uh, um, Tony Robinson. We, 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 in the early days of our walk, we were just so blessed to be able to I hate to use the modern term, but network with so many great yeah. teachers and have and build up a library of such outstanding resources uh, that that really shaped our understanding. And not so that we went through this deal of the traditions weighing more than the scriptures, but the eye-opening aspects of of the Hebrew language. And, and how those words and what they mean from a Hebraic standpoint versus a Christian standpoint and, and the basis for them. It's just every day we learn something new from it and it's, it's always refreshing. Um, and there's those little nuggets, they, they continue to come. I mean, you've got 66 books to work from. So it's, <laughs> and then the Torah reading cycle, we've pretty much, been in it since the beginning of being introduced to it and just as we are now you know into the second week of the Torah cycle here um, it's just eye-opening how the the Hebrew words bring out the additional meaning and the thematic connections that link all the scriptures so there there are a couple of things that I, I would like to bring out that that had huge impacts on me personally, and I think Ross too, and early in our walk. And, and one of them was understanding the difference between a Hebraic mindset and a Greek or Roman Latin mindset. And in that Hebrew is a verb based language. So everything revolves around actions and English, Greek, Latin, it's all noun based. So it's all things. And just understanding that that the scriptures are written from that perspective really helps you to think about that a little more. And I think the paper was My Big Fat Greek Mindset by Tim Haig. And it just really, that is something that we recommend to all folks that ask us about our walk and where we get all this richness from the scriptures. We get that all the time. Where do you find all this richness? But the Hebrew language is just a big, big part of that. And the other aspect that, that, we, that made a difference for me was to understand that everybody goes through a mourning and a loss um, because, you know, you, it's the seven stages of grief. You, you feel like you've been lied to. And so that anger and then the acceptance and the bargaining and, and that whole period. So if you can allow yourself to work through that, but yeah. just get all the way through. So you don't stay in the anger stage and just, you know, be mad all the time because you felt like 
your pastor lied to you because he didn't. We were all saved. Well, most of us, Rabbi, sorry. <laughs> we were all saved under the name of Jesus. Right, right. Yes, um, which is so important. And thank you so much for speaking to our audience about that if you're dealing with this, because that is uh, huge for a lot of people feeling that they've been lied to. But as you're saying, Nita, what's important is through that name, Jesus, you were saved. Through that name, you came into a revelation of the Father's heart. And now the Father is just taking you deeper into his heart. That's that's what he does, right? Yes, like, it is. The Jewishness of his son, which is so key and so important. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's so awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. You're so okay. we're going to take a look at our, our Torah nugget since uh, um, Ross mentioned Yona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to... Take a look at our Torah nugget. And so this week we're in the in, in Parshat Noach. Um, but uh, could you you all just speak to, uh, because I know at this point we've started a, uh, the cycle all over again. Could you speak to just, to just a second about what that means to you, restarting the, the, the Torah cycle? Well... And it's funny because in my devotions this morning, um, I was saying, you know, Lord, I, I love doing this, but please show me something new. Please open my eyes to see the wonder and the joy in your Torah. And, and he did. And so that was that okay. was really great. And, and what he showed me about um, then even the name Noah. Yeah. And, and with relating to to rest and and it just I just was astounded once again <laughs> at the at the wonder of Hebrew and the yeah, depth yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, there is this um, uh, rabbi who said um, that the Torah that we're learning now will pale in comparison to the Torah that the Messiah will teach us in the Acharit Hayamun. In Indeed. <laughs> imagine, imagine, mm. uh, that's going to be complete perennial Asherah, right? Asherah. Indeed, yes, yes. So, so let's take a look at this. We're going to read it, and I know that um, you all, that you both have um, something that you want to share, something that has been uncovered because Nita's prayer was, Lord, show me something new. And, and so let's take a look at this. I am going to bring this to the stage and here, let's try this. We'll do this and okay. Okay. So this is from uh, Genesis Bray Sheet 6, 9 to eleven thirty two is what Noach is about. It's called the flight of the dove. The Ruach of creation hovering, Genesis 1-2. Noah's dove, unlike the raven, not settling to death and desolation. We see that in Genesis 8, 8-12. But Yeshua's dove, settling, renewing, refreshing, sanctioning the beginning of ministry, anointing, watching over that which had it had created, making sure that the perfect will of God for this creation is carried out. A dove is a symbol of gentleness. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out, Matthew 12, 20. Noah's dove brought back an olive branch, an olive branch loaded with symbolism of the seven species. The olive, provides light, food, a cleanser, medicine, anointing, bringing back the branch of which Yeshua is symbolic. Mm. The Ruach, like a dove, rested upon Yeshua, and he is with you, in you, among you, and for you. Amen. 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 So let's take a look at this. Um, now, when uh, 
we talked about this ruach of creation um, and the, the the whole idea hovering. Um, yeah, in the in the Hebrew, the verb merechefet, that idea is is like a dove or this idea of having wings and brooding over something like brooding, hovering. And I think the uh, most of the translations say and the Ruach Elohim or the spirit of God hovered over creation, but it's the idea of brooding. So that, so you get that initial image in the beginning and it was um, really among the rabbis, the uh, Ruach Elohim in the beginning you know, more often than not, they say that this is the Mashiach, right? This is the Mashiach brooding mm -hmm. and hovering over the face of the water. So I, I just wanted to throw out that because that's like initially the idea of the 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 bird image, if you will, that we get. The hen and Yeshua uses that later on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But anyway, I, I wanted to begin with that. So what, what do you all think? Anything, any part of this that spoke to you or? Hmm. Go ahead. Well, you know, I was doing some research on the web, of course, and, and I found something that was very interesting in terms of the word dove in Hebrew. Anita is a lot better at uh, talking about or pronouncing and looking at the letters themselves. Mm -hmm. And so the letters for the three letter root of Dove or Yona are Yod, Vav, and Anun Sophit. Mm -hmm. This uh, Abrams biblical name vault in uh, a publication, Abrams publication of biblical dictionary, it says something very interesting about that root which I had never seen before. And, it, and it's going to be more research for me because I, I hadn't seen good. this before. It's good. It's good. <laughs> but the, uh, the root is a little bit different than what the whole word is. And, it, and the root is, means mire or swampy or boggy ground. So it's like the first time the dove went out, it could find no footing. Uh, and, and so it's kind of a Hebrewism, you know, the, the root of the words, there's no footing. But when you get all of the word together, um, then you, you end up with that yona. The yod, the olenbav, the noon, and a hey. Uh, which is the symbol of the, the vast abundance and the ruach and and uh, the spirit, the, the bodily form of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I just found it very interesting that the root would have a little bit different connotation than the whole word itself. Hmm. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, kind of typical, even like when we look at uh, the names of um, like Deborah, you know, meaning I think that's B. I think that's like a yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's very interesting. Uh, even the uh, names that are chosen, like this for even for Jonah, right? Jonah, uh, that's the name that's chosen for him. It's, it's it's very interesting. And and even when you begin to look at his life and kind of living this out, like you're saying this. No footing, this boggy ground. I mean, it's actually where Yona was when he's running away, right? When he's running away from God, he's actually at this place. But when we, um, uh, I wanted to take a look at this. Uh, I heard someone say, which is where I got this idea of um, the brooding image of this dove. And remember, it's like, uh, even when the dove, as you were saying, this Yona is over Yeshua when he's being immersed, the writer is quick to say it was like a dove, right? It's yeah. like, it may not, whatever that means. What does that mean? Does that mean the bodily form of a dove? Or is this what he imagines it would, would be like or is like? 
uh, was it actually the dove or this kind of image of one, right? So, so anyway, this idea in the beginning where we have that Mary Kefid hovering over the face of the water, someone said, very interesting, a rabbi said that he was protect, protecting that which was created because remember he was brooding over the chaos and the void, the tovu vivohu. That's what he was, God had already created. And now that he was protecting what was created to make sure that it was not destroyed. And, and so this idea of, um, I think I had it here, Yeshua's dove settling, renewing, refreshing, sanctioning the beginning of ministry, the anointing. So it, it symbolized the anointing, watching over that which it had created, right? So this idea of the ministry coming forth out of Yeshua, which this is new, right? This is new. This is when he starts his ministry. And now the dove hovering, uh, anointing it, and now uh, not only protecting it, but sanctioning that which is now created out of Yeshua, which is this ministry coming forth. And created is, is, a, is a different word because, you know, even from the beginning, beyond the beginning, this was going on. So just that idea of making sure that the perfect will of God for this cre for this creation, this this ministry coming forth out of Yeshua, is carried out. Well, you know because because you link that because you're drawing a connection between the dove that Noah sent out and between the dove that's or, or the ruach like a dove that settled upon Yeshua. The image in my mind is that just as just as out of death came life and mm -hmm. dove being sent out was it wasn't the first time the dove was sent out he had to wait until there was new life that had come up mm -hmm. and just as it happened in the days of noah and so for the whole time period of the earth um it's like the earth had been in a state of it had been in a state almost of a death since uh, since mm -hmm. sin had come upon man and, the, and the, the Ruach of God was waiting for there to be new life, for there to be the mm -hmm. new life yeah. in Yeshua that he brought where he could settle just like the dove in Noah's time had to wait for that, that period of newness to come after the washing and cleansing of the earth. And I, I see that connection yeah. that, that you made. Yeah. That's really, that's really good. And there he finds this footing, right? There he finds this branch and he brings it back to, to Noah. Now Noah knows that they can go out. This is, you know, the water is definitely receding. There is a place where they can have footing now, mm -hmm. right? There's a place. Um, so I, I wanted to... Can we talk about the branch a little? Does uh, anyone have anything to say about the branch? Oh, sure. Well, can yeah. I go back to the brooding a little bit? Because, yes. you know, you, I thought of another bird when you mentioned the dove and brooding. You know, we live in farm country up here, so there's lots of chickens. <laughs> and as you, if you've ever seen a chicken be broody, what they're doing is exactly what you described in that their feathers are, you know, they're sitting on the eggs because they're creating new life, mm. but their feathers are completely encircled so that it's, they're protecting what they're creating. Mm. And they can be kind of not so nice if you try to get in there and get, uh, get an egg. You know, you might get yourself pecked a little. Yeah. So I just I thought of that and how how God is just so incredible in using creation yes. to 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 show us pictures of what He's trying to do or say. Yeah, that's thank you so much for uh, creating that image for us because that that's the idea of Merakefit at the beginning, the brooding, and I think it's Matthew twenty three where Yeshua 
you know, is weeping over Jerusalem and he says, how I long to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you won't even let me do that, right? right? So he wanted to brood over them. He wanted to protect them and to protect that which he was creating this nation coming forth. Um, But, you know, they they would not allow him to do that uh, according to that scripture. Hmm. Yeah, so... um, uh, Ross, you had something about the branch? Well, um, I was just thinking in terms of Yeshua being referred to as the branch, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the branch of Jesse uh, and that uh, that branch of being spread out across the globe. Mm. Uh, his, his, uh, his peace, his shalom, his introduction to the kingdom. You know, Yeshua was always speaking of the kingdom and bringing people into the kingdom. The kingdom is now. Uh, and that part of the gospel uh, by spreading that branch. It's like the Ruach is hovering over and, and brings the branch. And I just see that in terms of Yeshua being brought to the world. You know, the word, the word was with God. The word was God. And it, it became flesh and dwelt among us. So yeah. it's, it's the branch of Jesse that's come to us uh, through and, and brought salvation that way. Amen. Amen. Mm. Uh, just as uh, this dove brings back the olive branch, right? Brings back the branch, uh, extending that to us, that shalom to us. Just as Yeshua says what, um, uh, my peace I give you, right? This is not like the world's shalom, but this is mine. And even when the dove brings that like this, is from Hashem, this this olive branch, this peace, this the sure footing that you have, right? This is from Hashem himself. Yeah. Well, it made me think of another set of branches in Ezekiel when the Lord is talking to him about taking the branch of the house of Judah and the branch of the house of Ephraim and bringing them together. Yes. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, because that's, uh, you know, and and I I love that you said that because um, actually um, there's this passage about, um, I think it's, I think it's actually in Nehemiah, you just made me think of it, uh, Nita, when you said that, but we just came out of a celebration of Sukkot and Mm -hmm. in this passage, Once they get out of Babylon, they realize they haven't celebrated Sukkot and they go out and they grab, uh, actually it says wild olive branches, Mm -hmm. right? It just made me think of that. Yeah. Whether this one was cultivated wild or whatever, but always, even in the midst of that symbol of the olive tree and the olive branch until Rav Shaul brings it together in Romans 9, 10, and 11, you know, he brings that image together that that wild will be grafted into the cult of Yes. So he's always, there, there's always this um, reference to the nations, always this reference to the nations because he wants the nations to come in as well. So yes, we have a few more minutes and uh, wanted to talk about the nature even of the olives. Um I loved what you wrote. Can you bring that back up on the screen about the olive and all of the all of the uses for it? That was just incredible. Yes, yes. Isn't that just yeah uh, beautiful? I'm gonna let me see. Let's do it here. All right. Um okay. There, yeah, that's wow. He brought back an olive branch, an olive branch loaded with symbolism. You know, and you talked about the branch itself, both of you. And then the seven species, you've got all of those in. But the olive itself, the light, right? The oil. Yes, the oil. The oil. Food, you can eat it. Mm-hmm. And they, and, and it is understood that, um, you know, once you get the first dripping of the oil and the second dripping, you know, the, uh, the Evo, once you get all of that, then what... Uh, is left can be as a cleanser. Then there's the medicinal properties. And of course the anointing. The anointing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
And then he brings back the branch of which Yeshua is symbolic. And um, you both, uh, you know, shared um, really revelatory information, even about that branch. But yeah, all of that is in Yeshua, isn't it? Right? The 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 light, the food. Even he says about food: unless you eat of my body, right? Unless you yeah drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. And we know that that's not literal, but there's an understanding that when we can, when we um, partake of this walk with him that we partake of him and that we live for him so um any other thought about any one of those the light the food the cleanser the medicine mm -hmm. the anointing well just in the follow-up to just exactly what you said there you know when he says that that i'm the way the truth and the life that that i take of my body and my blood you know the, John 1 says he was the word and it became flesh. Well, the word is the Torah, which brings us back to that introduction and to those Torah cycle and the reading, yes. you know, that foundation of the scriptures that were, we have all of this richness that's there. And it's part of, of our heritage in the Lord to look at that richness and to okay. glean from it and to get those, get that food. To, to get that sustenance, to get that medicine, you know, because the Torah says that if you'll follow his ways and do his will, you'll not have the diseases of the Egyptians. So if we to walk in his ways and obey his commandments, you know, his commandments are just the boundaries, right? They're yeah. just the boundaries. So if we, if we understand the boundaries better as we mature in the faith, our walk gets better, we get closer to him. So that, that olive food, that branch, the, the green leaves, the, the being grafted in, all of those things have come to fruition in our lives, definitely within our lives. Amen. Amen. So, so those of you who are listening, right, as we are now in this new Torah cycle, we're here at Parshat Noach, right? And every Parsha, is food for you. Right? Yes. Every Parsha is light for you. Mm. <laughs> His word is a lamp unto your feet. It's a light unto your pathway. His word is a cleanser for you, right? We just, it's like wash me even with the water of your word. It's a cleansing agent. That's what his word is for us, right? It's a medicine. As Ross was talking about, you know, even this idea of a merry heart, that's the word that tells us that, right? A, a merry heart does good like a great medicine. But the word of God is your medicine. It is it. Right? We can consume this word. We can inhale this word. We can, we can go to bed on this word. We can wake up in the morning, right? Consuming it. And it is, it's, it's food for us. It's a cleanser. It's a medicine. And it is anointing for us. Right? It, this is what sanctions, just as Yeshua, his ministry, everybody saw it. Right? Well, there's an indication, but not everyone. <laughs> John, we saw, we saw the, this, the Ruach like a dove descend upon Yeshua because it was for him to see. That was an indication mm -hmm. that Yeshua is the Mashiach. So he saw it. But this anointing, you, you want it. You want that sanctioning of what you're doing. And the word sanctions that. What you do, if it's inside the word of God, it is sanctioned by him, right? So we just continue mm -hmm. to do what he, he tells us to do. Hmm. I, so I just uh, can't leave out the also, the aspects of the uh, wild olive branch being grafted into the to the um, cultivated branch mm -hmm. as well tree, yeah. up to the tree, and what and and if you know, I, I remember a botanical teaching once about this grafting, and that you think somehow that the tree would be made less than, but actually, when the grafting is done. It actually uh, encourages the tree to increase its yeah. sap production, which just uh, feeds 
that wild branch which is being grafted in. And if anything, the tree comes to a greater fullness with this, this encouraged sap that comes from the root and, and how the tree is made is just made fuller because of it. Yeah. I, I think that's a beautiful image that, um, that, that speaks about how God's desire for his Ruach to just bring everyone in to be grafted into the tree. It's, it, it just makes the, even the tree healthier. Yeah. And, and it, to follow up with that, Rabbi David, is that do you remember how long it takes a graft to take? How long? Three days. Three days. Uh oh. Really? Come on now. Oh, three days. Right there, it takes a graph three days to take hold. That's... Does that just give you Holy Spirit bumps or what? Well, that is um, <laughs> actually, I have to teach, uh, do this message, right? And, I'm, um, and it's going to come out of uh, Genesis, Bereshit, but I'm speaking on the third day, right? The third day. But thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nita. <laughs> three, I'm, going, I'm saying that because I'm going to use it. Okay. <laughs> but, but here we are. Okay. You've got the, the uh, cultivated olive tree and you've got the branch, the natural branch that was broken off, that's put back in. And then you've got the wild, <laughs> uncultivated <laughs> branch. <laughs> that's now grafted into the cultivated olive tree. And now together, guess what we're doing? We're causing the root to produce more, to sustain us for the ministry that God mm. has given to us, right? And produce and fruit. you are being yeah, salt and, and light. And, and I, I want to I wanna put a plug in for you all with your audience just really quickly. You know, you heard us say how early in our in our walk, we found some amazing teachers, but for the Lord to connect us with these two amazing teachers three years ago when we first met them, if you have the opportunity to sit under these two incredible teachers, highly recommend it. Highly Bless recommend it. Bless you. you. And um, Ross uh, knows one night he came to Bible study and I had to take a picture because he was a seat seat wearing motorcycle <laughs> man. <laughs> I wish I had that picture here. I'd put it up here. Yeah. <laughs> so he hasn't given up his motorcycles, guys. No. Okay. no. <laughs> uh, nor the seat seat. Isn't that cool? Nope. Nor, nor the seat seat. Nor the seat, yeah. seat. Absolutely. So is there something that you just want to say to our audience in the 10 seconds that are remaining? Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us yes, on. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure and a joy, as always. Can you encourage with you guys. our audience in something in their studies and Noah in the in the few minutes that are remaining, but we have no minutes and no seconds. Okay. Right. We love you guys and can't wait to see you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Bless you and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. shalom.